Aloha and good afternoon. Mahalo for joining today's AEN Agenda uh, hearing on Monday, February 6th, 23 1 p.m. We are here in Conference Room 224 and video conferencing, which includes the audio and video of remote participants as being streamed live on YouTube. You'll find uh, viewing options for all Senate meetings on the live and on-demand video page of the legislature's website at capital.hawaii.gov. And in the unlikely event that we have to abruptly end this hearing due to technical problems, the committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business at 2 p.m. Friday, February 10th, here in room 224. And a public notice will be posted on the legislature's website. For our testifiers who are joining us remotely, all testifier audio will be muted and video disabled until shortly before it's your turn to testify. Note the time limit for testifier and if you're and because of our 90 minute time limit for each of the AEN hearings and our very long agenda, we're going to be limiting the uh, testimony to one minute today. And we'll have a virtual countdown timer on the Zoom screen. So please be aware of the timer. I will be announcing only the testifiers who will be providing testimony via Zoom. Uh, for the complete list of testifiers, along with all the written testimony, please go to the ledger's website and find the link on the status page for the measure. And we apologize if the closed captioning doesn't accurately just transcribe the names. And so our first bill is on the agenda is Senate Bill 640. Relating to agriculture, establishing a Hawaii Ag Investment Program to support local ag producers, requires annual reports for the legislature. And first up, by Zoom is uh, Jody Yee or Brian Yee from the uh, Attorney General's Office. Good afternoon, Chair. Good, Good afternoon, afternoon, Vice Chair. Jody Yee with the Attorney General's Office. Uh, we provide comments on the bill. This, as uh, drafted, requires some standards, and we have proposed language also in my testimony. If you have any questions, I will be around. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And next is the Department of Ag, Sharon Hurd. Good afternoon, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Richards, members of the committee. The Department of Agriculture stands in support and offers comment that this bill would provide state support for ag, state support funding for the ag industry. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Next is Brian Miyamoto from the Hawaii Farm Bureau. Good afternoon, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Richard, members of the committee, Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. Uh, the Hawaii Farm Bureau stands on its written testimony uh, in support. Again, we're pleased that the legislature is looking for an investment in ag. It covers a, a wide range of everything that we've been asking for about agriculture, especially since the barrel tax was taken away, um, about $3 million a year that the department had to help with many of the things that are pointed out in this measure. So we appreciate the support. Um, we did have concerns in previous year about the matching requirement, 25%, but we see now it's changed to the Department of Agriculture. We don't want to limit any of our small farmers' ability to access these funds. So thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you, Brian. Next is Nicole Galassi from the Hawaii Cattlemen's Council. Hello, Nicole. Hi. Thank you, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Richards, and members of the committee. We stand on our written testimony and support, and we also encourage the committee to take consideration of the details outlined in Ulupono's testimony. Mahalo. Tech, I don't know if you can get rid of that thing that's in the middle of the screen there, but anyway. Uh, next is Kendall Matsuyoshi from Local Food Coalition. Good afternoon, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Richards, and members of the committee. Uh, the Local Food Coalition will stand on its written testimony in support of the measure and just reiterate what the Farm Bureau said that you know, the barrel tax was taken away from the Department of Ag, so it's important to start funding this uh, important uh, industry. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Mike and Cocker from Ulipono Initiative. Afternoon, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Richards, members of the committee, Mike and Munikata here on behalf of the Ulipono Initiative. We stand on our testimony in strong support of this measure. We view this as one of the most important bills that the Agriculture Committee is taking up this session. 
main reason is from from some of the comments mentioned before uh you know with the tough economic times of 2021 mm -hmm. Tough decisions were made around um, getting rid of some of our special funds, and one of which was our Ag Development and Food Security Special Fund, a fund that the Department of Ag historically used to support industry and the many issues that it faces and trying to really help move it in the right direction. So we find that this uh, Ag Investment Program is a step in the right direction. Um, we do see that it is a matching grant program so that, uh, you know, it's not a full subsidy coming from the state, but asking, actually asking producers to provide some skin in the game. Um, so what that really tends to do over time is, is get serious folks, those that are really in agriculture, to consider the, the opportunity here within the state. We've also done a lot of outreach across the state to see like what producers need and what issues they face. And a lot of them um, have stated that these very issues that are listed in this, this bill um, around land, water, transportation, food safety certification, et cetera, the list goes on. So this bill really looks to make a, a dent in, into some of those hurdles that they're facing in order to make them more economically viable and successful as a business. Chair, we have some uh, okay, recommended sorry, your, amendments. You got some amendments here. Your sure. Here. Thank you very much. We have those amendments. Thank you, Chair. Great. We'll take a look. Appreciate it. Ronald Wiedenbach from the Hawaii Aquaculture and Aquaponics Association. Okay. Anyone else wishing to testify on this measure that's here online? We have 12 in support and zero opposed with one comment. Members, any questions? Moving on, SB 652 relating to ag appropriates money to the Department of Ag for the control and mitigation of the two-line spittlebug and for recovery efforts for lands damaged by the two-line spittlebug. First up is DLNR. Anyone from DLNR? <laughs> Aloha Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Richards, members of the committee, Chelsea Arnott with the Department of Land and Natural Resources and Program Support for the Hawaiian Basis Species Council. Uh, the department stands on its written testimony in support. Um, and just recognizing that two-line spittlebug isn't only an agricultural pest, but a major pest to natural areas. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Sharon Hurd from Department of Ag. Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, this is Sharon Hurd from the Department of Agriculture. We stand on our written testimony. Thank you very much. Anna Wishford Zorek from UH. Anna's not here. In support, Nicole Galassi from the Hawaii Cattlemen's Council. Nicole? Get your mic. You. There, there you go. go. <laughs> it wouldn't let me unmute on my own. Thank you, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Richards, members of the committee, Nicole Galassi on behalf of the Hawaii Cattlemen's Council. I want to first thank this committee and the legislature for the support provided in previous years. Um, it is heartening to know that we got the support previously, that you know and understand the detriment this invasive species has to beef production, but like Chelsea said, recreation, overall watershed management as well. Um, we're here again asking for your continued funding for this effort. Uh, this is an invasive species that's detrimental, but not yet out of control. So the funding will be put to good use, and it's extremely important that we keep up the actions to prevent the spread, and we strongly support this bill. Mahalo. Thank you, Nicole. Ryan Miyamoto, Hawaii Farm Bureau. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. We'll stand on our written testimony. However, Chair, I do have a correction to make or an addition. We do note that in 2016, there were 2,000 acres um, that we had spittlebug on. Our testimony references 2019 with 142,000 acres. However, the, I believe the latest report for 2021 is 176,000 acres. We can see what's happening. Uh, we believe it is confined right now to West Hawaii Island. But like every other invasive species, it's going to spread unless we mitigate this problem. So thank you for the opportunity to testify, and we do support this measure. Thank you, Brian. Next is Michael McCunicate from the Lupono. Thank you, Michael. Scott Enright from the Hawaii Sustainable Beef Enterprises on Zoom. In support. 
Anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? We had 22 in support, zero opposed, one comment. Members, are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll move on to SB 682 relating to animal fur products. Prohibits the sale, offer for sale, display for sale, trade, or distribution of certain animal fur products in the state. First up is Susan Lee with the Humane Society of the United States. Good afternoon, chairs, members of the committee. My name is Susan Ree. I am the Hawaii State Director for the Humane Society of the United States. On behalf of my organization and our Hawaii supporters, I'm here today to ask for you to vote in favor of SB 682. Each year, more than 100 million animals are killed solely to be turned into fur coats, keychains, pom-poms, and the majority of these animals, like foxes and mink and chinchillas, are held captive by the thousands in fur factories where they suffer extreme neglect in confined cages. The methods for killing these animals are just as gruesome. The fur industry also causes major environmental pollution. The runoff from the animals on the factory farms pollutes waterways and soil. Many of these chemicals are known carcinogens and harmful to surrounding communities. Hawaii has a chance to take affirmative stand against the cruel practices and environmental harm inherent in the fur industry. The statewide legislation to end the sale of new fur products is essential for Hawaii to do our part to help end animal suffering in the hands of the fur industry. For all these reasons, we respectfully ask that the members of this committee support the passage of six, SB 618. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Susan. Next is Angela Melody Jung. Aloha, Kayaka Chair, Vice Chair, and the committee. My name is Angela Melody Young, testifying on behalf of ROAR, Rescue of Animal Rights. Um, and we testify in strong support. Um, and I will go into some details. It is a little bit heinous and insidious, but I think um, here at the legislature, we should present the facts and people have a right to know about what goes on in the farms. Um, so as the previous testifier said, each year, 100 million animals are slaughtered for fur. The farms that produce animal fur are inhumane and cruel to animals. Animals that are caught in the wild are trapped in inhuman, in inhuman ways, such as with weights that crush their necks and then um, traps that leave animals struggling before drowning. Um, rabbits are usually killed for their fur when they're just six months old. A lot of animals are kept outside in extreme weather, such as snow. The animals do not receive vet care and many of them have injuries. Um, so this is a very, um, very inhumane industry. And, you know, PETA has many videos of um, farms and investigators that go into there um, to catch them in the act of heinous crimes against animals. And these practices are illegal in the US as we have a very high standard of ethics. However, although the farms are illegal, buying the fashion products and condoning such practices through retail and fashion is not. It is imperative to put a stop to inhumane farm productions that support animal cruelty. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you, Angela. Next is Tina Yamaki from the Retail Merchants of Hawaii on Zoom. Oh, here. Oh, here today. Okay. Apologize. I've been having technical difficulties. <laughs> so I'm here in the flesh. Aloha and good afternoon. I'm Tina Yamaki with the Retail Merchants of Hawaii, and we are opposed to this bill. And the reason is industry is already regulating itself. We are seeing um, a lot of cut stores already phasing out their fur products, whether it be coats or accessories. Um, a lot of the top name brand designer are no longer doing fur products in their fashions anymore. They're using faux products. A lot of the faux products look a lot like real products. Um, Hawaii's average temperature is in the 80 degrees, so fur coats are not something a lot of people go out and buy and or the demand is really high here in Hawaii. It's mostly purchased by our visitors um, who live in the colder climates. And we'd also like to um, point out that um, 
a lot of the visitors who normally buy these things come from Asia. We haven't really seen the Asian visitor coming back. So for us, if you put the deadline too close, a lot of these stores that don't have sister companies on the mainland are going to either have to trash it and they're going to have a loss. And we've already seen a lot of stores closing and having a lot of um, difficulties right now. Um, businesses can't afford any more hardships. So that's why we're asking you to hold this bill. Industry here in Hawaii, at least, is already regulating itself. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? We had uh, 19 in support, two opposed. Members, are there any questions? Moving on to SB 743 relating to coffee pest control, extends the sunset date for the coffee berry borer pesticide subsidy program, June 30th, 2025, and the program manager position, including the position civil service and collective bargaining laws exemption to June 30th, 2026, requires the Department of Ag to report to the legislature and appropriates funds for the operation and implementation of the pesticide subsidy program. First up is Sharon Hurd with the Department of Ag. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair Richards and members of the committee. The department supports this measure and stands on its submitted testimony with the comment that we have staff here to answer questions should there be any. Thank you. Next is Anna Wischurek, UH, in support. Brian Miyamoto from the Farm Bureau. Thank you, Chair. The Hawaii Farm Bureau will stand on its written testimony in support. In support, thank you. Chris Manfredi from the Hawaii Coffee Association on Zoom. He is in support. You're here, Chair. Okay, Chris, go ahead. Aloha Chair, Chris Manfredi with the Hawaii Coffee Association. Likewise, Aloha Vice Chair Richards and members of the committee. Uh, we stand on our written testimony in support. I just wanna underscore that this program has been very successful uh, in assisting growers combat these invasive pests and disease. It's really been a lifeline for Hawaii's coffee producers, uh, helping us compete with growers from around the world who don't share our high cost of production. We thank you in advance for passing this out of committee. We thank you for hearing the measure. We're available for questions and again, stand on our written testimony. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Hey, uh, anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? Any questions, members? I have a question for uh, Department of Ag. Chair. So I know in the bill that uh, the fund, it said that the fund shall be dispersed upon approval on an annual basis by the department to the coffee grower for up to 75% before July 1st, 2016. And then it says 50% of the costs incurred from June 30th, 2016 to July 1st, 2023, and then bumps back up to 75% for July 1st, 2023 to June 30th, 2024. I'm just, why did we go down to 50% for that period between that seven year period between 2016 and 23. Chair Gavin, may I call on? Yes, this? please. I thought I saw Helmut earlier, but here's Darcy. Hey, Darcy. Good afternoon, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Richards, members of the committee. Um, I do not. Uh, I have no good answer as to why it bumped down. Could you, could you find out and, and get back to the committee? Certainly. Good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. On 743, there were nine in support, two opposed. And moving on to Senate Bill 748 relating to environmental protection, appropriating funds for the construction and operation of the non chemical sunscreen dispensers on all state beaches to alleviate the damaging effects of chemical based sunscreen on reef ecosystems. Allows DLNR to contract with private parties to assist with the maintenance and management of sunscreen dispensers at all state beaches. First up is Ted Boland with the Hawaii Reef and Ocean Coalition. 
Thank you, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Richards, members of the committee. My name is Ted Bolin. I'm here representing the Hawaii Reef and Ocean Coalition. The coalition has been working to eliminate sunscreens that harm reefs since, uh, boy, it's been six or seven years now. And uh, we were instrumental in passing the original oxybenzone and octanoxate ban. Um, since then, the County of Maui and the County of Hawaii in the last year have outlawed chemical sunscreens because there are other ones besides those two that I mentioned that are harmful to reefs. Obviously, reefs are hugely important for Hawaii's uh, shoreline protection, uh, way of life, beaches, everything else. So we want to do what we can to um, help people uh, switch from chemical sunscreens. These dispensers are going to be not only helpful in protecting the reefs, but now that people in some counties can't buy the chemical sunscreens, it's great if they can switch to zinc, and these dispensers would enable that to happen. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Great. Thank you, Ted. Next is Lynn Miyahira from the Public Access to Sunscreen. Aloha Chair, my name is Lynn Miyahira and I'm representing the Public Access to Sunscreens. Uh, we stand on our written testimony and we would like to provide comments. Um, in August of 22, I think, before I start, sorry, I want to say that we support the intent of sunscreen dispensers, uh, but we want to make sure that they're not only limited to mineral sunscreens on the assumption that they're really safe. So in August of 2022, the National Academy of Sciences issued a report on sunscreens and the, its impact on the environment, and it found that there's currently insufficient data. There's not a scientific consensus on, on sunscreens harming corals in their natural environment, as opposed to a lab. Um, so, and it also found there's reef safe sunscreen is, is a marketing term. It's not a regulatory, there's no scientific justification for the term yet. And so until there is, there's really insufficient data to say that mineral sunscreens are in fact reef safe. So that's something I, I do think we want the, the council to consider. I also wanted to mention, this is not in my testimony, but um, if we do go forward with mineral sunscreen dispensers that um, we don't, like in Maui, they have the brand name like really prominent and that I, I think that we should not be promoting any specific brand of sunscreen, uh, rather the it should just be agnostic. Right. So, so that was something I definitely wanted to mention. So we just, we urge lawmakers to support access to all FDA approved sunscreens, either chemical or organic. All right. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to uh, testify on this measure? Please. Good afternoon, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Richards, members of the committee, uh, David Sakota for DLNR. Uh, we submitted written testimony uh, I'm not sure if you folks received it, but um, we're in support of Senate Bill 748, and we suggest an appropriation of $100,000 to implement it, provided that it doesn't adversely impact our executive budget request. Thank you. Thank you, David. Anyone else? Members, are there any questions? Yeah, Chair. Senator Richards. Yeah, um, thank you, and uh, I fully support the intent of this. My concern for this has to do with the report from National Academy of Science. And uh, Mr. Bolin, can I ask you to come back up and just comment a little bit? Thank you, Senator Richards. Um, thanks for uh, coming back up. Very concerned about coral reef and some of the stuff that I'm working on shows that, but I'm also concerned about our human population and UV exposure. And so this is the balance I'm trying to strike. And I'm very science-minded and data-driven. And I was waiting for this report in a previous job to come out and it came out equivocal. Do you have any comments on that? And is there further work being done to uh, answer the question? I have to say sadly that I think the NAS panel was biased and selected with a lot of people on it who have conflict of interest. And so I was not waiting for the report to see. I think there's scientific studies. If you want to be data, data driven and science, I don't think the National Academy of Sciences, which is usually where you would look, is the right place to look in this case. I'm not sure of what additional work is being done except that the FDA, who is really uh, much more the regulator, uh, is, is uh, continuing to look at it, hoping that they will get some studies from the industry, which has 
yet to produce, uh, showing that their products that they're putting on the market are safe. So I think that if, for the time being, that zinc oxide is a much better way to go. I would agree that we shouldn't favor any particular brand. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, the other thing I would say is that I agree with you that we want to limit sun exposure. But the way to do that is not to put on sunscreens that wash off and leave people with the false impression that they're protected because the chemical sunscreens are mostly UVB biased, which is to say they prevent sunburn and not skin cancer, which is what you want. So if we had better sunscreens that had better UVA protection, I'd feel better about going out in the sun. But the best advice for people, in my opinion, is to stay out of the sun and cover up in the middle of the day. And, I'm not, not going to argue that one. Yeah, and, and if you are in the sun, then use a zinc oxide rather than a chemical. Okay, I appreciate that. Now, if you have some data, I'd like to see that. Yeah. I'll and try to uh, some. Chair, just one quick question for uh, Ms. Mia. Your up, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ted. Hi. Thanks. Yes. Um, you and I have had conversations on this before. Mm -hmm. um, also, I'd like to see any data you might have because right. I want to evaluate this because, again, we're this is a balancing deal. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we all agree where the direction we want to go. It's just how we get there is what we're trying to get at. So if you have data to support sure. the, the concerns you have, please send it my way. Well, did, did you, you want me to send it to you? Yeah, please, to the, everybody. Yeah. All right. Thank you yeah. very much. And you, Ted, same thing, information for the committee. Thank you. Thank you, um, Chair. Yep. And let's see, anyone else on this measure? We have 15 in support, zero opposed, and one comment. Moving on to SB 793 related to recycling, amends recycling goals under the Electronic Device Recycling and Recovering Act. So the goals are based upon the manufacturer's overall market share in the state. And let's see, first up is Department of Health. Good afternoon, Chair Gabbard, uh, Vice Chair Richards, members of the committee. My name is Michael Burke, the Department of Health, uh, Solid and Hazardous Waste Branch. Uh, we submitted written testimony commenting on SB 0793, and we stand on a written testimony. And I am available for questions if you have any. Thank, Thank you, Michael. Next up by Zoom is Mihiko Ito and Walter Alcorn with the Consumer Technology Association. Aloha, Walter. Uh, Aloha, Chair Gabbard. Good to see you again. Aloha. Um, we stand on our written testimony, um, and we are interested in, and we're supporting this measure to make both electronics recycling sustainable and also the availability of new consumer electronics to Hawaii consumers. So the idea is to maintain a high level of effort to get electronics collected, uh, e-waste collected, um, and also to have targets that are achievable. This is a 100% manufacturer financed program, and we are working with the Department of Health on some technical amendments, and we encourage you to move the bill forward, and I'll be available for any questions as well. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Next is Tina Yamaki with Retail Merchants. Hawaii. Aloha and good afternoon. I'm Tina Yamaki with the Retail Merchants of Hawaii, and we're really in strong support of this bill. We appreciated um, last year's bill in order to try and do some e-waste recycling. However, the bill does it based on weights, and we all know that's kind of antiquated because as we can see, our TVs, our radios, everything is getting smaller and lighter now. So we won't be able to really obtain those goals. And the penalties attached to that is really high. And so what happens is it's going to be passed on to the consumer. We also have to remember that we're an island state. So unlike the mainland, we cannot truck or put it on rail train to these recycling and redemption centers. Um, we actually have to ship it out. And then it has to go on either a truck or um, a train or something to get to these um, centers. So it is a little bit more expensive for here in Hawaii. Um, we urge you... Um, to pass this bill, and we think this is um, going to help a lot. Mahalo. Thank you, Tina. Next is Constance B. with Mr. K's Recycling and Redemption Center. 
by Zoom. Aloha, Constance. Aloha. I, I am Constance B. I am representing Mr. K's Recycling and Redemption Center. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. I am new to this, so please bear with me. I just wanted to uh, share that we oppose uh, to uh, this bill, SB 793, which modifies the recycling goals, penalties, and definitions of its program. Uh, also, our community has no, our community has no consistency as far as the program that will bring assurance and support, which allows recycling as a convenience. Uh, we also oppose it uh, due to. Can you? Is it okay? Can you hear me? <laughs> we also oppose the management of electronic e-waste solution, which includes incineration of TV, which burns lead and mercury, and also not including the. Uh, they're also not including the uh, recycling of stand-up floor printers and peripherals, as well as cell phones. We also oppose the, oppose the amending of the OEM recycling uh, goals based on the manufacturing overall market share in weight, based on the prior year sales by weight and, and not sold weight. The bill makes certain claims with no data and, or figures to prove them, and it takes no consideration as far as location and cost, i.e. Oahu versus neighbor islands. Okay, thank you, Constance. Thank you, have a good day. Okay. Anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? We had two in support, 16 opposed, two comments. Members, any questions? Yeah, Chair. Senator Lidge. Um, Thank you. If, is Constant B still on Zoom? There she is. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Ms. B. Just a question. I definitely hear what you're saying concerning the neighbor islands and the concern to make this go forward. We've had these conversations before. Do you have any suggested language for the bill that may help us out and address some of your concerns? Well, you know, I have my box here. I have the owner, Mr. Case, three sacks. Yeah, I can see him. Yeah, so basically, you know, we have been working with the community for many, for many years in regards to uh, e-waste recycling and so we we are experienced and we you know basically we are the only uh people here on in the state of hawaii that support the community so if it has anything to say in regards to his question oh well i mean i i have some concerns like um you're talking about why why hawaii Hilo, right hawaii the, the big correct island, or the islands uh uh what is our concern right well, as far as cost. Well, while it's, so, it's so, um, Mr. Kadoda, in the um, in the uh, interest of time, what we can do is if you contact my office, or I'd like to talk story with you a little bit about and see where we can try and solve the problem. We've talked story about this before with the e-waste on the, the neighbor islands. So, um, but I'm curious to see if you've got some ideas and suggestions because I know this was a problem that the state funding ran out and that ran into problem for the big island. So I'm aware of that. Uh, but if we can do that, Chair, if that's okay, just in the interest of time, we can have a talk story and then uh, maybe you can communicate that to the committee. Does that sound reasonable? That sounds reasonable. Okay. All right. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Moving on to SB 967, establishing an organic food production tax credit for farmers investing into the organic <clears throat> certification process. First up is Sharon Hurd, Department of Ag. Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Richards, members of the committee, the department supports this bill. Uh, we have handled in the past the orga organic tax credit program, and it is labor intensive. There's a lot of documents to go through, so we're asking for consideration of additional staff to take care of this process. Okay. okay? Thank you. Next is uh, Gary Suganuma from the Department of Taxation. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Shauna Ho, and I'm here on behalf of the Department of Taxation. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to testify. The department stands on its written testimony and providing comments on this measure, and I'm available to answer any questions. Thank you. Brian Miyamoto from the Hawaii Farm Bureau. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. Uh, Hawaii Farm Bureau supports this measure. You have our, our supporting testimony. 
Um, organic certification process is costly. We want to increase our organic production here because it will um, result in import replacement. The more food that we import, be it organic or other foods, the more hitchhikers that we are bringing in invasive species. So we want to increase all ag production and the organic certification process is costly. Uh, we did note, as we do in most of these bills, that we'd love to see these type of exemptions um, provided to all locally produced foods. But this is a start, um, so we do support this measure. And, and Chair, uh, I didn't know you guys could control the cameras. I'm not gonna do Zoom anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Okay, let's see. We're on to Tom Yamachika on Zoom. Tom? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Tom Yamachika from Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Uh, we noted with some interest that you're hearing Senate Bill 640 uh, relating to the Agriculture Investment Program. Uh, we think that um, uh, if you think uh, expenses for organic certification are worthy of uh, subsidization that this, this could be considered for that program. Uh, we certainly support that as opposed to tax credits because it's more accountable. Uh, you know what you're getting, you know, what you're, and you know what you're paying for. Where with tax credits, you know, neither. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. And also next we have Karen von Revelt Rivara. Aloha, my Kako. Hello. Uh, my name is Karen von Merwald Guevara. I'm trained as a Western medical doctor. I work as a health consultant in the United States. I'm a member of the American Academy of Environmental Medicine and the International College of Integrative Medicine, and I speak at conferences relating to autism in children. Um, for us, working in this field, it's been an attempt to stem a tidal wave of uh, in, like, ailments associated with conventional food growing. So for us, the minimum uh, we can support doing is help our organic farmers to be supported in whatever we can. The first measure I, uh, I basically um, recommend my patients is to switch to organic uh, with all the other protocols we drive in order to get the pesticides and herbicides out of their bodies. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? Um, members, are there any questions? Okay, let's move on to SB 998 relating to the spaying and neutering of animals establishes a spay and neuter special fund and an income tax check off to be deposited into the spay and neuter special fund. By the way, on SB 967, there are 52 in support and zero opposed, with three with comments. Okay, so on 998, first up is uh, Louis Salaveria from Department of Budget and Finance. Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Neil Mia here for the department. Um, we would strongly recommend that if you're going to do this, you appropriate the money to the counties to make the grants. We have neither the subject matter expertise or grant uh, administration expertise, and we really don't have the bandwidth to do this. Thank you for your call. Thank you, Neil. Next is uh, Gary Suganuma from the Department of Taxation. Offers, oh, here we go. Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee, my name is Shauna Ho, and I am here on behalf of the Department of Taxation. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. My department, the department stands on its written testimony in providing comments, and I'm available to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Angela Zong with Roar, Rescue of Animal Rights. Uh, 
Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, um, and the rest of the committee. My name is Angela Melody Young, testifying in strong support on behalf of Roar, Rescue of Animal Rights. Um, cats are wonderful creatures and have intrinsic value to society. People may view cats as um, invasive, or there is a labeling of cats as being invasive species, um, a term that um, the testifier from the Pig Bureau mentioned, invasive species. Um, because cats eat indigenous birds, um, but it's just the natural behavior of cats. And um, actually, there are also many positive characteristics about cats. Um, feral cats can be trained to be domestic animals. Rescue cats can also be emotional support animals. ESAs provide um, relief to humans and has numerous benefits to our health and mental well-being. ESAs help to mitigate mental emotional symptoms. Um, and trapping release is the most humane method of addressing the cat overpopulation um, crisis in Hawaii. When the male cats are in heat, they will attempt to mate with every female cat possible. Trap and release cat programs are flourishing in vets and clinics throughout Oahu. The Humane Society has a very active program, creating a spay and neuter special fund and allowing funds from an income tax checkoff to be deposited into the special fund does not require citizens to contribute unless they want to. So it's a very good solution. And being that the cat crisis is a concern, a statewide concern, this is imperative to address. Um, in so your time, Justice. Thank okay. you very much for your testimony. Thank you so much. I, you know, I have a, I have a um, request about an amendment. I don't know if, should I email? Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Next up is Grant Seismore from the American Bird Conservancy on Zoom. Grant? Aloha, my name is Grant Sizemore, and I'll be speaking on behalf of American Bird Conservancy in opposition to Senate Bill 998. Um, I've already submitted a written testimony, but would like to provide a few additional comments. Uh, first, whether sterilized or not, cats will continue to kill Hawaii's threatened and endangered birds. Cats have already contributed to the extinction of two Hawaiian bird species and are a major threat to the remaining water bird, seabird, and forest birds. Cats are also massive and indeed the only source of environmental contamination would be parasites that cause toxoplasmosis, which can cause serious uh, health problems in humans and wildlife. The parasite is excreted in cat feces and has been found throughout cat colonies. Now, while sterilizing and reabandoning cats has been promoted, it is both inhumane and ineffective and not supported by Hawaii's residents. I commend Senator Rhodes for his concern for cat management, but suggest that strategies be prioritized to not perpetuate the harms caused by these cats. And thus I'm suggesting that enclosing cats would provide a secure and safe space for the cats, enable regular care and appropriate veterinary treatment, and eliminate harm to wildlife and risk to the community, and suggest that the bill be amended uh, to achieve that end. Mahalo. Thank you, Thank you Grant. Next is Alicia Manuafiti. Good afternoon, Chair. Members of the committee, my name is Alicia Malufiti. I'm the volunteer board president for Poi Dogs and Popoki. I did submit um, proposed amendments. I hope you take those into consideration should you move the bill out. I want to tell you my real life example, and that is I've been taking care of cats and dogs for 30 years. And guess what? I have a cat colony. It started with 55 cats. I'm down to four. The property manager called me and said, Alicia, can you please stop taking away the cats? Can you let the rest of them stay here? The restaurant owners want them here. We've already been contacted by a huge West Side Mall and a golf course to help with trapping to return on the West Side. So it's it's a strategy that's working. It's long term. It's humane, and it's the solution we all need. I understand the concerns of the bird people. Guess what the birds do at my colony? They eat right next to the cats because that's the key. If the cats aren't hungry, they're not eating birds. And so we do encourage that. You guys want to come eat? You keep eat with the cats? We don't have any problems with any of the birds getting killed by the cats. It's a symbiotic relationship. And just real quick on the talk show, do you know that it, since we're pulling kittens from all of these colonies, there's only a little two-week span when they're kittens where they shed Toxo if they're positive for Toxo. They're not all positive for Toxo. So the win-win here is that we as colony caregivers pull those kittens. Guess what? No more Toxo. Feral cats live about seven years outdoors. This is why my colony went from 55 down to four cats. So I'd ask you to pass this bill if you could please consider the proposed amendments. I appreciate your time, Senator. Thank you. Uh, okay. 
Okay, next is Stephanie Kendrick, Kendrick with the Hawaiian Humane Society. Richard Hubbard, Vice Chair Richards, nice to meet you. Committee members, Stephanie Kendrick with the Hawaiian Humane Society. Um, we are strongly in support of this bill and, and you have our testimony to that effect. I just wanted to comment a bit on the um, breadth of the testimony and the breadth of the support that this measure has across the state. The need really is intense, uh, even more so in our neighbor island counties than here on Oahu where the city does a pretty decent job of supporting spay neuter services. And to the point that the conservationists want to make, I just want to point out that even the TNR support aspect of this bill does not put cats on the landscape. The cats are there. These programs are designed to make sure that those cats aren't breeding and, and so we don't wind up with even more animals living outdoors. So if TNR really is, you know, when conservationists say it doesn't work, well, it doesn't work instantly, no. I mean, it takes time, but it is the only comprehensive thing that's being done to address this issue and the people who are doing it almost exclusively volunteers doing it out on their own dime really do deserve the state support. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? Yeah, actually, Ted Boland, we have Ted Boland before you. Thank you. Thank you, Ted. Thank you, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Richard, members of the committee. Ted Boland, representing the Hawaii Reef and Ocean Coalition. Why does the Reef and Ocean Coalition care about cats on the earth land? Well, the reason is that, as, as described by a couple of previous testifiers, toxoplasmosis is a very difficult uh, disease. Um, and it has caused the death of some monk seals and other marine animals because spores come out of the guts of young cats and they last outside the body and they wash down with the rain into the ocean, and then they can be quite damaging to the. So we have a cat population problem, free roaming cat prop population problem. Uh, trap spay neuter is a good way, so this is a good bill, and we support it strongly. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? Members, any questions? Okay, we had 160 in support, 28 opposed, and one comment. Moving on to SB 1009 relating to Miano Nico Tinelli. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so you're a farmer. Senator Richard. No. Uh, Neonicotinoids. Neonicotinoids. Yeah, sure. Of course. <laughs> right on the tip of my tongue. Uh, <laughs> amends the definition of restricted use pesticide to include neonicotinoid pesticides. So first up is Department of Ag, Sharon Hurd. Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Richards, members of the committee. Sharon Hurd, Department of Agriculture. We, we stand on our written testimony, but we have to offer comments on the bill that currently, if you move neonicotinoids from the, in, onto the restricted use permit list, we currently have over 420 products that have neonicotinoids on it as an ingredient. And this includes products such as flea collars, cockroach treatments. Um, and that would require that applicators become certified record keep and follow the rules of being a restricted use pesticide applicator. In addition, retailers that offer these products for sale would have to consider permits as well. Uh, so should this bill move forward, we're asking for additional staff because the paperwork is going to be pretty tremendous if, if this becomes a restricted use pesticide. Okay, and we have um, staff here online to respond to any questions. Thank you very much, Sharon. Next is Tim Lyons from the Hawaii Pest Control Association. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Um, I'm Tim Lyons. I represent the Hawaii Pest Control Association, which provides uh, structural pest control services for our residents. Um, we understand the sensitivity of this bill with protecting the pollinators. However, as DOA also pointed out, this is a very large category. Um, and to make it a little easier, we just call it neonics. 
It'll be easier Thank for you. everybody. You're welcome. Yeah. You're uh, so, um, but they are quite used on a, on a common basis for termites and bed bugs and cockroaches and Zika virus and West Nile virus and dinghy. And so putting all of those on the restricted use list, we think is obviously going to raise the price. And what we see when that happens is people trying to do their own, such as the trailers that periodically blow up because people put too many foggers in their own house. Um, so those that we would rather avoid. Um, and we don't apply any of these outside for the most part. I mean, we'll do soil treatment around the house, but I really think we shouldn't necessarily be talking about that part. It will, um, banning it will impair um, the control methods, but it certainly um, isn't going to improve it for the bees. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Next is Ann Frederick from the Hawaii Alliance for Progressive Action. Hello, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Annie Frederick on behalf of the Hawaii Alliance for Progressive Action and Strong Support. Um, so neonics have actually become, over the last two decades, the most widely large used insecticide globally. And um, one possibility, I, I'm, um, I understand the concern that the Department of Ag has raised, and perhaps there's amendments that could address, um, look at some of the other states that have passed similar regulations. There's about 10 states that have has some form of pollinator protections, um, limiting maybe their use in landscaping and agriculture. So that might help with um, the, the long list of neonicotinoids to regulate. Um, but as you'll see in our written testimony, we've included several citations to peer review studies that are showing um, both the harm to pollinators, but an increasing body of research of harm to human health as well, in particular birth defects. So um, we'd be happy to work uh, with the committee or with um, Department of Ag to look at some of the other regulations that have been passed and see what might be amenable here in Hawaii. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Alicia Maluafiti from Crop Life America. Chair, Crop Life America will stand in opposition. Thank, Thank you, Alicia. Ted Boland from Hawaii Reef and Ocean Coalition. Hawaii Reef and Ocean Coalition will stand on our written Support or opposed? Oh, it's strong support. Thank you. Next is Renee Pinnell from the Western Plant Health Association in support. And then Christopher Finarelli from the Household and Commercial Products Association. Opposed, Brian Miyamoto from the Farm Bureau. Good afternoon, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Richards, member of the committee, Brian Miyamoto, here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. The Hawaii Farm Bureau respectfully opposes this measure. We have no objection with reclassifying pesticides as restricted use pesticides. However, we believe that the appropriate entities and vetting process to determine restricted use pesticide classification already exists and should be used. Pesticides are strictly regulated by the federal and state governments and there is, we believe, a thorough process to determine pesticide risk and classification. So we do respectfully oppose this measure. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Brian. Next is Ryan Tessa from the Western Wood Preservers Institute on Zoom. Hello, Ryan. Unmute, please. There you go. Uh, unmute took a little bit of time. Aloha, Chair. Aloha, members of the committee. My name is Ryan Pesa. I work for Western Wood Preservers Institute. We stand on our written testimony submitted for SB 1009 and uh, request some amendments to the bill, exempting the wood preserving industry. Wood preserved products play an essential role in our daily lives, especially here in Hawaii. The Hawaii State Building Code requires that all preserved wood products be installed for structural lumber. This is in our state code. Um, the, as written, the bill would have the, net, the potential to negatively affect our industry and the structural integrity of Hawaiian buildings. <clears throat> I further would like to point out that EPA is undergoing some assessments on neonicotinoids. Neonicotinoids and we would just request uh, deferring this legislation if you do not adopt uh, exempting the wood preservation industry. Thank you, Ryan. Anyone else wish to testify on this measure? Yes, Chair. Please, come forward, you. state your name. 
Good afternoon. My name is TJ Charisma. I'm a resident of Waihawa. I stand also in support of this bill, and I would like the testimony of Annie Frederick of the Hawaii Alliance for Progressive Action to be entered as if they were my own. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Anyone else, please? Again, Karen from Nova Guevara, uh, American Academy for Environmental Medicine is part of what I belong to. I submitted uh, stringent articles from the most uh, recent body of research when it comes to the harm of humans by neonicotinoids. Um, one, for example, is the uh, exposure to, to neonics uh, in serum testosterone in men, women, and children, which is basically going from here to here already worldwide. This is contributing to it. We have increased in breast cancer because of the estrogenic effects of the neonics. We have um, more contributing to uh, reproductive effects, meaning uh, lessening of the reproductive um, organs, uh, no, an increased effect on reproduction by the um, change in hormones in our youngsters already. This, the neonics are contributing to a pre puberty onset of female hormones in our girls, they are contributing to lower testosterone in our boys. That is really of concern. We have 20% of the uh, population in the reproductive margin of the population already uh, suffering from infertility. That's 20%. People go to inf uh, IVF for that. You know? thank you so much. thank you. Uh, Steve Tevis from the HCIA, one drop improvement. Chair, in opposition. Thank you, Steve. Anyone else? Yes. Thank you. Aloha, uh, Chair, Vice Chair, and Committee. I'm Teresa Landro. I'm a citizen. I live in Mililani Town. And uh, like you, Senator Gabbard, I didn't know how to pronounce Neo Nick. <laughs> we use Neo Nick for short. Neonic. But I've learned a lot about it recently. And as a result of the data, we well, as a result of some citizen concerns and, and a meeting that went on at the Whitmore Village. And really what this, I mean, in support of this bill, it's really an attempt to follow the science because there's considerable published, reliable science about the considerable health and uh, environmental risks of these neonics. And as, as um, the Department of Agriculture indicated, it, it is widespread use now without sufficient regulation by untrained people that don't necessarily understand the risks or the federal regulations. We don't know if they're being followed. Um, so the benefits of this bill would be to, um, by classifying for restricted use, you would then have control to be able to monitor and make sure that the applicable federal regulations are being followed and the excess amounts or inappropriate use isn't happening. Teresa, I'm sorry, your time's up. Do you have your written testimony? I, I have submitted written testimony. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? Members, are there any questions? <laughs> Senator Rhodes? Thanks. It's been a good for not asking very many questions. I destroy everything when I do. Uh, Department of Agriculture, you might come back up again. I mean, I guess there's a I guess there's a, a bee industry in this state. Am I incorrect about that? Very big bee industry, yes, sir. Are, are they are their numbers holding up? Is is the neonicotinoids a problem for them? How does because I mean my understanding is overall, like the whole country, bee populations are cratering and it's largely because of neonicotinoids. Um ask permission to uh, call up subject matter experts. Okay, sure. okay thank you. Good afternoon, members of the committee, chair. Uh, thank you for the question. Our uh, uh, honeybees uh, can be impacted, but the primary concern against uh, uh, for the challenges faced by neonicotinoids here in Hawaii are not uh, Apis mellifera, mellifera, the European honeybee, but our endemic pollinators. Um, so this so this endangers uh, na native forests then. Uh, that, that, that's what's that's what happens with neonicotinoids on the U.S. mainland. Um, our bee populations here in Hawaii are actually thriving and doing better once they've recovered from, on, especially on Big Island and Oahu, from the roa mite and and statewide from small hive beetle. But our 
pollination services for agriculture are not being impacted by neonics at all. <laughs> so I was um, practicing. But the uh, but but you're saying then that, that for native species, it's not that, an issue. It, it's um, what we see is uh, on uh, bees need to be preserved, but what we what we're talking about is a general whole. Um, I'm a member. I'm I'm the uh, member at large for the Apiary Inspectors of America. The bigger discussion nationally is for all of our endemic pollinators, which can be impacted by the widespread use of neonicotinoids. Um, yeah, I did, I did that one correctly. Um, <clears throat> on a broader scale, especially with large scale agriculture. And, um, and this, this impacts, for instance, bumblebees, which we don't have any native bumblebees in Hawaii. Right, no, no, my question was farther down the line. So yeah. the, the, the plants that are pollinated by our endemic bees, I mean, I guess you're saying that we're, we're lucky at this point, we're not getting, we're not seeing the effects here. Um, and so the, the, the native species aren't being affected, the native plant species aren't being affected by the, the the threat to our native pollinators is more from habitat loss than anything that okay. we're applying. Well, that makes me feel a little better, but right. I still, as a, as a chemistry minor in college, I, I, it's pretty nasty stuff, as I recall. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Okay, moving on to SB 1011, remaining for sure, pesticides. Sure. Yes. Real quick. Um, I'm sorry. If, sorry. Okay, one quick question. question. Sure. Um, Karen, the, the, okay, thank you. Um, you uh, stated on some data. I'd like to see the papers. Could you send them to my office? Me. I'd be happy to talk with you afterward because yeah. this is um, really there's more. We're not more. gonna have time to talk today. Okay, yeah, whatever. Um, but yeah, if you could send me the papers, I'd like to review them before we have yes. a conversation. Yes, there's more. Send it off as two hundred two. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Sure. Next is SB ten eleven relating to pesticides requires monthly rather than annual reporting of restricted use pesticides. Amends the contents of reports to include specific. Geospatial data and information, site information, and increased detail on the amount of restricted use pesticides used. It requires the Department of Ag to develop an online reporting tool on restricted use pesticides. First up is Department of Ag. Oh, and by the way, the last measure on 1009, uh, there were 59 in support and nine opposed, with four with comments. Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Richards. Um, the department respectfully opposes this bill for the reasons stated in the submitted testimony. The comment that I wanted to bring up is that it does create an undue burden, excessive burden for the current applicators as well as for the department. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Alicia Malofiti from Crop Life America. Chair, we'll stand on our testimony in opposition. Thank you. Annie Frederick from Hoffa. Hello, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Um, Annie Frederick on behalf of Hoffa and support. Um, so I just wanted to convey the sort of most important um, thing about this bill is that the current data is insufficient to do any credible public health studies. And so we worked on helping um, we worked on helping with this bill and looked um, specifically at California's reporting um, regime. And what is um, particularly important is the geospatial data. So in Hawaii, we report by TMKs, which can vary widely in size, whereas California requires within a square mile. And my understanding is that in most cases, pesticide applicators have to document where they're spraying anyhow to know when it's safe to re-enter fields or to for the next treatment. So this information should be information that they have already. Um, we're just asking that that be shared more specifically so that public health studies can be done. Um, I just wanted to point your attention to Dr. Rosanna Weldon's um, testimony in the, in the file. Um, she is formerly a professor of public health um, environmental scientist at UC Berkeley and actually conducted a lot of the studies. She's now at UH. Um, so her testimony is really compelling in terms of all of the studies that, that California was able to conduct around public health based on the specificity of the data that they require. So um, we actually have been doing a lot of work to try and make sense of the data and share it with the public and would be happy to share any of that with the um, Department of Agriculture as well. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Next is Maki Morinoi from Huli Pak on Zoom. In support. 
Ted Boland, Hawaii Reef and Ocean Coalition. Thank you again, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Richard, members of the committee. Ted Boland, representing the Hawaii Reef and Ocean Coalition in strong support of this measure. Restricted use pesticides uh, are a threat to human health and the environment, and if not properly applied, it's very important to know where they've been uh, sprayed, where they're used in order to protect human health. So I agree with the previous speaker that uh, we wanna have the geospatial data, we wanna have monthly reporting, and we support this bill. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ted. Next is Jerry DiPietro from the Hawaii Seed on Zoom. Jerry? Aloha. Members of the committee. I'm Jerry DiPietro, president of Hawaii Seed, and I live in the Kona district of Kauai. We um, and our members stand in strong support of requiring monthly reporting of restricted use pesticides. For far too long, this classification of poisonous products used in open air environment conditions have been applied in secrecy. These restricted use pesticides are already deemed to be of higher toxicity, so much so that they may only be sprayed by a licensed applicator. After passing a law to receive an annual report, it was not uniform nor consistent in format. We know that these records are kept. The RUPs um, are purchased and applied. Uh, the fields are defined. So the records are kept and organized and each of us as stewards of the land are asking to be informed on a monthly basis. Just as you receive a monthly bank statement or a bill, this information can and should be made public in a timely manner. In this case, we're asking for monthly reporting. Thank you very much and please stand with the community and support the passing of SB 1011. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you, Jerry. Next is Ryan Pessa from the Western Wood Preservers Institute. Ryan? Aloha, Chair and members of the committee. My name is Ryan Pesa again with Western Wood Preservers Institute. We are in opposition to this bill and are requesting some amendments to exempt the wood preservation uh, industry and our products. As I've mentioned, Preserved wood products are essential here in Hawaii, as well as in the mainland. The Hawaii State Building Code requires that all structural lumber be preserved. Uh, we do use some neonicotinoids in our um, preservatives. <clears throat> then we would like to distinguish ourselves from other applications of pesticides. The way wood is preserved is very unique and different. We have no aerial application. There is no impact to farm workers, pollinators, surrounding communities, the environment and other crops as listed in the bill. And we'd really respect and request that the bill be narrowed to the agricultural community and not wood preservation. Thank you, Ryan. Next is Steve Tevis from ACIA. Good afternoon, Chair. We stand on our comments Thank you. Next is Karen Von Guevara. Hello, I'm Maiho. Karen Von Merville Guevara, Kailua, Windward Side. Um, as I stated, I work in environmental medicine. It is really crucial for us to understand what our patients could possibly be have, uh, have been exposed to. We can only know that if we have a timely reporting that we can access with uh, detailed data on how much was used and what concentration uh, with geospatial data. I would like to add that we do in this type of medicine check on patients by urinary sampling for toxic chemicals. So we have some monitoring of what we can find in there, but there is a whole slew of things we just cannot uh, prove or extract from the data we can accumulate. So we need extra data in order to be able to help our patients. If the if Hawaii really wants to meet the health goals for 2030, whether expressed by the Department of Health or by the OHA, I think it is absolutely necessary that we have a better reporting of what's being put out in the environment. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Anyone else wishes to testify? Yes, please. Please. Thank you. And I'm actually going to give you a copy of my written testimony because I have composed the testimony to be a minute and 20 seconds. Okay. And because of my restrictions today, I need copies for you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, TJ Charisma, lifelong resident of the North Shore. 
Chair, Vice Chair, as a resident of Waihawa and having grown up on Oahu's North Shore, I'm a, I am concerned about the 215,000 pounds of restricted use pesticides, also known as RUPs, that are being used in my community. I'm concerned that the two most heavily used of those pesticides are carcinogens that are highly prone to drift. While I have not seen autopsies of those family members and friends, who have passed away and were employed by either the Wailua Sugar Plantation, Del Monte Plantation, and Doe Plantations, it saddens me that the use of RUPs continues till today. However, without further study, we won't know definitively if these pesticides are drifting and causing health or environmental impacts. Having good data is the first step to being able to assess these risks. Unfortunately, the way our regulatory system is, and it works to often curtail or limit usage after the harm has been has already occurred after decades of long studies that document impacts. Thank I stand in strong support of SB 1011. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm not sure why you don't have our testimony. We'll resend it. Um, if you don't have it, but the Hawaii Pest Control Association, again, is in opposition with this bill. This is another one of those that unfortunately just does not fit our industry very well um, for two reasons. One is the sheer volume. Um, we're doing over 50 to 125 fumigations a day um, in the islands, and they will have to, DOA will have to take all that information. The second is, is we object to it being too specific um, when you're fumigating people's homes, you don't really want to provide an address list to your competitors, um, and that would that's what would be required. So based on both of those, um, again, we don't think it fits us very well, so we'd be in opposition. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, and Committee. Again, I'm Teresa Landro. I would just submit this is about science, about having a intelligent approach to regulation of, of admittedly very dangerous regulated chemicals. And um, you've done a good job in mandating reporting, but this is a necessary tweak so that that reporting is decipherable and useful and timely enough to be put to good use. It's kind of scary to hear that a reason to oppose the bill is the high volume of application going on on a daily basis throughout the islands. At any rate, I think this bill, I support this bill because it would help support with solid data, community studies, scientific studies, and inform you as a legislature about the best way to, about the degree of risk and the best way to um, protect the land, the water, and the people of Hawaii. Thank so you. please follow and support the science. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, members, any questions? Sure. So I'm just going to submit a testimony. I'll so get all the comments. Okay. Thank you, Brian. And if you don't have it, we'll make sure the committee gets your testimony. Thank you very much. Sure. Members, any questions? Okay, moving on to SD 1132 relating to ag. Appropriates funds for the Department of Ag to identify a central area on Maui to plan, design, and construct a hemp decorticator facility for the use of interested parties in the area. 1132. Uh, Department of Ag. Chair Gabbard. By the way, the, on the last measure, there were 65 in support, eight opposed, mm -hmm. and five with comments. Mm -hmm. Please, okay. Chair. Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Richards, members of the committee, the department stands on the submitted testimony with the comment that the HDO respectfully requests that the bill be amended to reflect planning funding only. It, then I do have subject matter experts if you need an explanation. Thank you. Thank you. And next is uh, Gail Baber on Zoom. Submits comments. Oh, there she is. Yeah. Aloha. Hello, Gail. Hi, everyone there. Um, yeah, thank you for the opportunity for, to comment on this bill. Um, I'm president of the Hawaii Hemp Farmers Association. We stand on our comments. We're a 501c nonprofit that represents hemp farmers and 
individuals in the hemp industry around the state. Um, it's great to see a forward thinking bill. Usually we're playing defense here. <laughs> um, but so we're really appreciative that someone is thinking about ag infrastructures in farmers needs. Um, we'd like to see the bill deferred until we can um, have it amended to address the fact that that most of the hemp farmers are on the big island, then Oahu, then Maui. We need to look at their needs. Um, we also need to change some of the rules to address farmers' needs that are already standing. And then also we need to include the farmers and the Hawaii hemp industry in any selection infrastructure. We, we know what we need. We're in contact with experts around the world in the country and DOA has always already stated they don't necessarily have that expertise. We wanna ensure the bill requires that we participate in that selection. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Anyone else wishing to testify on SB 1132? My apologies, Chair. We did submit written testimony in support. In support. Uh, we need to go to the Chair. Okay, thank you. Members, any questions? Moving on to SB 1223 relating to a special uh, purpose revenue bond to assist Maui grown coffee. Canoe issuance of the Spurbs in the amount of 30 million to assist Maui Grown Coffee with the operation and expansion of this farm and mill. We have the Department of Ag. Chair, Vice Chair, members, the Department of Stands are submitted testimony. In support or opposed? Oh, in support. In support. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, James Falconer with Maui Grown Coffee. James is not here in support. Hawaii Farm Bureau, Brian Miyamoto. Hold on, Chair. The Hawaii Farm Bureau is down. It's written testimony in support. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to testify on 1223? Members, any questions? Moving on to SB 1456 relating to a special purpose revenue bond for Honoka'a Land Company <coughs> to assist with acquiring, developing, and renovating ag facilities. First up is. Attorney General's Office, Attorney Nishiyama. Good afternoon, Deputy Attorney General Randall Nishiyama for the Department of the Attorney General. We have submitted our written comments and stand ready to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Hawaii Department of Ag, Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. Sure. Next, next is uh, Scott Enright in support by Zoom. Okay, anyone else? I'm present, Chair. Okay. Got you over here. Scott? I'm present on Zoom, Chair. Not present. Oh, I thought you said present. Okay, thank you. All right, anyone else wishing to testify on 1456? Okay, moving on to 1457. That's the 1457 relating to the issuance of the special purpose revenue bond for Cisco Hollow Mountain Fish Company for the establishment of the village project. Okay, first up is Attorney General, his office. Deputy Attorney General Randall Nishiyama for the Department of the Attorney General. We have submitted our written comments and stand ready to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Department of Ag. Thank the department stands uh, on its submitted written testimony in support. Thank you. Uh, Michael Munakata from Olopono is in support. Scott Enright from the Koha, uh, testifying for Kohala Mountain Fish Company by Zoom is in support. Josephine Tanimoto, Josephine Tanimoto here, she's in opposition. Okay, anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? We have three in support, one opposed. Members, any questions? Moving on to SB 1499, relating to taro, exempts income derived from the business of taro cultivation or production of taro products from the income tax. 
exempts from the general excise tax the gross proceeds or income received from the sale of any product resulting from the cultivation and production of unprocessed taro. Okay, Department of Ag. Thank you. Next is Gary Subanuma from the Department of Taxation. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. My name is Shauna Ho, and I'm here on behalf of the Department of Taxation. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. The department stands on its written testimony in providing comments on this measure, and I'm available to answer questions. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> I'm Yamachika from the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Huh? Thank you, Ch thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Uh, Tom Yamachika from Tax, Tax Foundation. Uh, we've submitted comments on the bill. Uh, we um, uh, do note that uh, this committee is also considering Senate Bill 640. Uh, the agricultural investment program and we think that um, rather than you know giving an open-ended exemption to taro and everything that's connected to it uh, you you may want to subsidize uh, certain defined uh, things like you know processing and farming of taro uh, as opposed to everything connected with it uh, with a subsidy program uh, you would be able to ascertain the the cost and you would know what you're getting for it uh, with the uh, with the current bill you have a credit and an exemption and the language is broad so you, you may not know what you're getting i'd be happy to answer any questions thank you tom next is brian miyamoto from hawaii farm bureau thank you chair the hawaii farm bureau was found on its written testimony in support of this closely reported crop thank you anyone else wishing to testify on this measure <clears throat> there were 36 in support, zero opposed, with three comments. Members, any questions? Moving on, the final measure on the one o'clock agenda is SB 1552, relating to invasive species, appropriates funds to support the Hawaii Ant Lab and mitigating the effects of little fire ants in the state. First up is DLNR. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, uh, Chelsea Arnott, Department of Land and Natural Resources, also program support for the Hawaiian Basis Species Council. Uh, the department stands on its written testimony for and supporting this measure. Um, as you all well know, uh, Little Fire Ant is a major pest, not only to agricultural, but also to natural areas, the environment, human health. It's one of those cross-secting pests that we really need to invest in to controlling on the other islands and also on Hawaii Island. So thank you again for the opportunity to comment. Thank you. Department of Ag. Thank you. Jim Lyons, Hawaii Pest Control Association. <coughs> is in support. Brian Miyamoto, Hawaii Farm Bureau. Thank you, Chair. The Hawaii Farm Bureau will stand on its written testimony in support. Okay. Anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? And members, any questions? Okay, so we'll take a brief recess uh, before we do our decision making. Okay, reconvening the one o'clock agenda for AEN. Uh, some decision making here. We'll start off with SB 640 uh, relating to the Hawaii Ag Investment Program. Uh, we need some more time on this, so the chair's recommendation will be to defer decision making until Friday, February 10th, 2023, at 2 p.m. here in room CR 224. Next is SB 652, two line spittle bug. Chair's recommendation will be to uh, pass as is. Any discussion? Okay, chair votes aye. Vice Chair. 
Uh, Chair, in the interest of time, I'm going to say we approve as chair recommendates unless I hear a negative vote. Does that agree with the chair? That's fine. Okay. Uh, does anybody have any disagreement with this bill? Hearing none, Chair, we have four in favor. Motion passes. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair. SB 682 relating to animal fur products. Chair's recommendation be passed as is. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Uh, is there any disagreement with the bill? No. We have one nay. Chair, we have one nay and three aye. Motion passes. Thank you, members. SB 743 to name the coffee pest control. Chair's recommendation to pass as is. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Committee, any negatives? Chair, we have four in favor. Okay. Next is uh, SB 748, having to do with sunscreen dispensers. Chair's recommendation is to pass as is. Any discussion? Chair votes on. Committee, any? We have, uh, and Senator Rhodes. Aye. We have two ayes, one with reservation and one nay. I vote with reservations. One second, keep it up here. Three ayes. We have two, uh, uh, three ayes, excuse me. Yes. This motion is adopted. Uh, is one. Uh, okay, seven SB seven ninety three is next. Electronic de uh, device recycling. On this one, uh, uh, chairs, you need uh, time for some more. Uh, if you have any more information on this, so we'll defer decision making till Friday, February tenth, twenty twenty three, here in room two twenty four at two p.m. SB ninety nine sixty seven uh, related to organic food production tax credit. Uh, chair's recommendation be to pass as is. Any discussion? Chair, chair votes aye. Chair, quick discussion. Sure. I fully support the intent, but I think we should support all agriculture production. And so I don't like carving out any one form of it. Okay. I will vote with reservations because I support the intent, but I think we should support all agriculture. All right. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mayor. Chair votes aye. Yeah, I vote with reservations. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Awa. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. SB 998 relating to spaying and neutering of animals. Chair's recommendation is to pass as is. Any discussion? Chair. Chair votes aye. Um, quick discussion, Chair. Sure. Yeah, I again fully support the intent of the bill, but I'm very mindful to some of the <clears throat> conversation that we had today and some of the testimony uh, that American Bird Conservatory as well as some of the comments um, just generally speaking as far as spay neuter I fully support the intent I do not support the spay neuter release because of the concerns for our endangered species and um, specifically the monk seal we've lost at least I think it's 14 in the last 15 years because of toxoplasmosis. Uh, a little bit near and dear to my heart, most people know I'm a practicing veterinarian and toxo is a big deal for us. So I am concerned environmentally about that with the trap neuter release. I will support the intent by voting with reservation. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair. Uh, Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Owell. I as well, but just like you. With reservations? Uh, no. But you will I? Yeah. Okay. Same reasons though. Chair, motion is adopted. Okay. Next is SB 1009. Yeah, 1009. Neil Nix. Okay. The, uh, yeah, we're ready to kneel next. The recommendation of the chair will be passed as is. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Uh, chair, just a comment on this. I am concerned about the long term effects of jumping on this, so I'm going to vote in opposition to this because I think we need to get more work done. Okay. Senator Rhodes? Aye. Senator Owa? No. Chair, 
We have a tie, so measure is does not pass. Thank okay. you. Next is SB 1011 relating to pesticides, uh, RUPs, restricted use pesticides. Chair's recommendations to pass as is. Chair votes aye. Any discussion? Uh, I'll make a comment, Chair. Okay. I am concerned about some of our testimony today. Um, I think this is not quite ready for prime time as yet. I support the intent, but I'm very mindful of what industry has been talking about that. We don't have the resources to do this. However, I am very concerned about the impacts of some of the stuff we use. I think we need to do a little bit more work on this before this has been ready for prime time. So because of that, though I support the intent, I'm going to be voting against this bill. Okay. Uh, Senator Rhodes? Aye. Senator Awa? Yes. Chair, motion passes. Thank you. We are SB 1132, relating to hemp decorticators uh, on Maui. The chair's recommendation will be to, as was requested by the Hemp Association, will defer this measure to Friday, February 10th, 2023, at 2 p.m. in this room, 224. Moving on to SB 1223, relating to the issuance of a special purpose revenue bond to assist Maui Grown Coffee. Chair's recommendation is to pass as is. Chair votes aye. Any, any discussion? Uh, if there's no in opposition, does everybody agree to this bill? Okay, Chair, we have four ayes. Motion passes. Thank you very much. SB 1456 is for the Honoka Land Company. Chair's recommendation is to pass as is. Chair votes aye. Any discussion? Committee members, any opposition? Seeing none, Chair, we have four eyes. Thank you. SB 1457, a spur for Kohala Mountain Fish Company. Chair, Chair recommendations to pass as is. Chair votes aye. Any discussion? Committee, any opposition? Seeing none, Chair, you have four eyes. Motion passes. Okay, thank you. And then SB 1499, relating to tarot. There's recommendations to pass as is. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Committee, any opposition? Uh, Chair, you have four ayes. Motion passes. Thank you very much. And then SB 1552, relating to invasive species of Hawaii Ant Lab. The Chair's recommendation be to pass with amendment in section 2, line 14, and should read funds expended by DLNR for purposes of this act, rather than the H. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Committee, any opposition? Chair, you have four ayes. Motion passes. Okay, this adjourns to one o'clock. We're going to reconvene at two o'clock. Uh, decision making on one measure. We have. Well, that's 660. Yeah, 660, right. Reconvening. Uh, can we, Chair, can we? Uh, Uh, AEM reconvening, um, actually, oh, not reconvening, this is the two o'clock agenda of uh, decision making on um, SB 660 relating to agriculture to establish a healthy soils program. I would like to amend, uh, pass this uh, measure with amendments uh, that was suggested by the uh, Hawaii Organic Land Management Program, that is to establish standards that phase out the use of petrochemical synthetic fer fertilizers over the period of five. 10 years and during this phase out period the department of ag shall provide assistance in a holistic approach to land management that integrates cultural biological and mechanical practices which cycle nutrients promotes ecological balance and conserves biodiversity uh, we need to um, set the standards for soil health to include the importance of, of a holistic approach to land management it integrates cultural, biological, and mechanical practices which cycle nutrients, promotes ecological balance, and conserves biodiversity. Okay, so the chair's recommendation will be to pass that with that amendment. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. 
Yeah, Chair, just a quick comment on that. Um, I think the direction is appropriate. I get concerned a little bit about setting a policy that's ironclad if we don't, if we run into a supply chain issue or we run into something where we need to have a band aid. So I'd be interested in seeing if we can have a, a process where we can approve petrochemical fertilizers if we need to as a transient thing if we have to fix something. Uh, and for that reason, I will vote aye with reservations. Thank you. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Awa. Aye. Chair, you have four motions. And that concludes the two o'clock agenda with decision making. Thank you very much, members.